This is the 23rd regular meeting of the 2009-2010 Common Council. And as is customary, our city clerk, Sue Richards, will read the quote of the evening. Thank you, Mayor. Teamwork is the ability to work together toward a common vision, the ability to direct individual accomplishments towards organizational objectives. It is the fuel that allows common people to attain uncommon results. Thank you, Sue. A very timely quote this evening. Uh, moving on, the roll call, please. Born. Here. Bauk. Excused. Bowers. Here. Decker. Here. Gisha. Here. Hannah. Here. Heidemann. Here. Koth. Here. Kittleson. Here. Kleunis. Here. Montemayor. Here. Rinfleisch. Here. Zurich. Here. Vanderweel. Here. Vu. Here. And Wangaman. Here. Fifteen present. Quorum is present. Uh, now if Vice President Heidemann can lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Joe. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes of the prior council meeting under discussion. No discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Mayor's appointments. Attorney McLean. I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Marjorie Mattern to be considered for appointment to the Housing Authority to fill the unexpired term of Perry Brugink, whose term expires 4-30-2014. Signed by the Mayor. That lies over. And Mary Nowacki to be considered for appointment to the Senior Activity Center Commission to fill the unexpired term of William Nyhus, whose term expires 4-30-2013. Signed by the Mayor. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. A motion to confirm Mary Nowacki as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. There is no discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on. Information of mayor's appointments, which we just did. Uh, public forum. Thank you, Mayor. We have five people this evening. Um, first on the list would be Major Hellstrom. If you'd like to step up to the mic, please. And make sure that the mic, you've got it up close to you so everyone can hear. Check, and I need check, your check. address. Uh, I'm here representing the Salvation Army, and their address is 710 Pennsylvania Avenue. Okay, and you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you very much. Well, Mayor Ryan and uh, distinguished members of the council, I'm here to offer words of gratitude uh, to a uh, probably a thankless job sometimes and uh, uh, some of the tough decisions that you have to make. Well, one of the decisions that is made is how to use community development block grant dollars. And uh, the Salvation Army has uh, been a recipient in the past and has uh, been a recipient this year. And we wanna thank you for helping to support our Red Shield Free Clinic and our Housing Assistance Program. Um, our Red Shield Free Clinic uh, in 2008 helped 1,164 clients and in 2009, that number went up to 1,300 clients. And the $16,000 that we're gonna receive this year of community development block grant dollars will go a long way in helping clients here in 2010. Our housing assistance program uh, helped 1,253 clients in 2008. <coughs> and in 2009, that number also went up to 1,374 clients or cases, and uh, again, $39,000 will help us uh, in 2010. The Red Shield Free Clinic helps uh, people who are uninsured and uh, people who are impoverished. Uh, that is uh, a program I think that is quite timely, and yet we've been doing this for 18 years, and the city has been part of that with these dollars um, since the beginning. Uh, our housing program, housing assistance program, is a one-stop shop for our clients for housing uh, issues. Uh, our program uh, helps 
uh, with a comprehensive approach, uh, with multiple layers to uh, their problem solving. And uh, we do that with uh, rental assistance, housing counseling, and mediation services. Um, and so, not to uh, go on too much longer, I just wanted to again say thank you to uh, the city for uh, allocating those dollars to us. Uh, they are critical to our programs and uh, crucial to the indigent in our community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Major Hilstrom. Next. Next on the list is Michael Hutz. Mike, can I have your home address, please? Sure, 1271 Kaufman Avenue in Sheboygan. 1271 Kaufman? Correct. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you very much. Good evening, Mayor Ryan, Sue, Steve, and Alderman. <clears throat> I welcome this opportunity to meet with you again regarding the proposed change to the table of organization. 12 of you heard me last week, so I will try not to be repetitive. Initially, let me remind you that you created a government structure committee and ask it for a recommendation on Sheboygan's future leadership. That committee presented you with a unanimous and enthusiastic endorsement of the city administrator concept. Since that time, the Greater Sheboygan Committee, composed of Sheboygan business leaders and the Sheboygan County Taxpayers Alliance, have also backed this position. 28 Wisconsin cities have full-time administrators, 24 with a part-time mayor and four with a full-time mayor. Clearly, this is a proven concept for local government, and it deserves your review before any unproven reorganizational plan is considered. Allow me to detail some misconceptions in the mayor's plan. First, he called his plan budget neutral and used the elimination of a $62,000 a year job for a portion of the funding for his directors. The only problem is that that position had already been deleted from the 2010 budget. You can't cut a position twice. Even if you believe the mayor's figures, isn't it unusual that suddenly dollars appear in a recently passed budget that can be used to fund his proposal? Second, the mayor touts savings in the HR function, which appear to be tainted. The HR budget shows salaries of 89,000, which I believe to be understated, but he does not speak of the additional $40,000 for negotiation and arbitration expense and 20,000 for contracted services, not to mention an undisclosed amount for the development of non-represented pay plan. The beauty of a city administrator is that many of them handle some of the HR function and can reduce these expenses. Most disturbing to me is that Mayor Ryan publicly indicated his choice for the Director of Operations is Dave Lutsky. A shocking comment in that we were led to believe that there would be a nationwide search for the right individual. This endorsement calls into question the validity of the entire hiring process. Even if you supported the mayor's plan, you now have to be concerned that the best candidate may not be chosen. I think there's reason for alarm here and certainly the appearance of nepotism. Mayor Ryan's proposed plan adds a multiple level of management complete with more bureaucracy, additional management confusion, and increases in salary. The dynamics of management salaries is that you will be paid more than the people you supervise. Accordingly, with the rapid increase in salaries for the police and fire chief, the director of operations will soon be paid equal to that of a proven city administrator, but with only a portion of the responsibilities. Under the mayor's plan, each of the three directors will report to multiple, excuse me, <coughs> to multiple aldermanic committees which is an invitation for overlap, conflicts, and infighting. With that background, I can only ask, why do we need a new tier of three directors when the duties and responsibilities can be handled by one individual who is trained in local government? There are other concerns which arose as a result of the mayor's presentation. First, the choice is not just between the mayor's plan and doing nothing, as he stated. The choices are the mayor's plan the city administrator, and doing what is best for Sheboygan. If the city is going to invest in reorganization, why not maximize the benefits by obtaining the best possible level of management, which would be a well-trained administrator who brings municipal management expertise, an independent viewpoint, and professional analysis. <clears throat> Despite what you were led to 
City administrators do not replace mayors, nor do they cost more than an unproven director of operations. Many of you have indicated your future support for a city administrator <coughs> in Sheboygan. I ask if in the future, why not now? Take the time to compare the mayor's unproven plan to the proven concept of an administrator as detailed in the report of the Government Structure Committee. As elected officials, you should demand the biggest bang for your taxpayer's buck, and you'll get that with an administrator. I agree with the mayor that Sheboygan government and management are in need of reorganization. However, there is no mandatory timetable for re reorganizational implementation, only the expectation of our community that it be done correctly. If you're going to restructure, do it right. And to do so, you must take the time to review all options, not just the mayor's proposal. Excuse me, Mike. Uh, five minutes are up. Would you like your additional okay. minute? Uh, what? Allow Mike's additional minute. Sorry. Okay. Thank Go you. ahead. And thank you very much. Mayor Ryan has continually informed us that he will be the mayor for the next three years and that he needs his plan. Well, I'm going to be a resident and taxpayer in Sheboygan for the rest of my life. And what I need is an organization that, de that develops and maintains the continuity of leadership to manage our community efficiently and effectively in the face of an ever-changing political climate. His plan simply does not accomplish that. Thank you for giving me the time to present my opinion. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Next. <clears throat> Next on the list is Eldenburg. Boy, he's a tall guy, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eldon, can I have your home address, please? Uh, my name is Eldon Berg, and I live at 406 Clement Avenue in the great first district of the city of Sheboygan. I'm, 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 thank you. Um, <laughs> All right, you have five minutes, sir. Okay, thank you very much. I'm speaking to you this evening as a member of the Greater Sheboygan Committee, and I'd like to start. Mayor Ryan, we support your efforts to restructure uh, how the city is run. Uh, historically, we have uh, been in support of a city administrator, and for those of you who would wish to learn more of that, I would commend you to our website, which is located at www.greatersheboygan.org. We differ somewhat in terms of the path we see reorganization taking. And this evening, I am asked that you give the city administrator equal time or due consideration along with the mayor's plan. Uh, uh, mayor, I got to know you well during the year that we were up here together, and I'd have to say that sales is your forte. Uh, tonight, the target audience is the council, and I've got to say that before the mayor moves in to hand you the pen and close the deal, I'd like to see if I can create a little buyer's remorse. Uh, simply put, I think that there is another product that, de that deserves some consideration. It's delivered proven results, it's cost effective, and it also can improve aldermanic quality of life as well as that of our residents and taxpayers. Of course, I'm talking about a city administrator. If you recall our initial report, we cite the Wisconsin Taxpayers Association study. In 2007, there were 22 medium-sized cities. Sheboygan is one of those. Eight of the 11 with the lowest per capita spending had professional managers. The original uh, government study committee submitted a report approximately a year ago. At that time, it recommended that a legislative path that could provide for refinement of this concept and inclusion in this year's budget. Unfortunately, it wasn't until October 29th that Alderman Rimfleisch had the opportunity to present a 10 or 15 minute overview of those recommendations. That was at the time when Mayor Ryan rolled out his proposal, which has been the centerpiece of ongoing discussion. There has not been the opportunity for a side-by-side -side comparison. I've listened very carefully to the subsequent discussion and feel the need to provide some clarification. First off, a city administrator has no role or responsibility than that that you give them. As elected, you provide the vision, you provide the mission, you establish the policies, you set the measurable goals and objectives and commit the resources. The administrator 
charged with ensuring these actions are implemented across all departments. They are not a city manager, nor do they replace the mayor, and they do not assert his or your authority. I have also heard that a city administrator should only come about as a result of a referendum. If installing one manager requires a referendum, wouldn't installing three require three? Uh, this is why we have elected folks, and that's part of the reason that you are up here, because many of you took a stand during the last election in support of a city administrator. I find it peculiar that now many have stated, well, I'm all for a city administrator, but not now. Maybe some other time. And it's, I'm reminded of the sign in the local tavern that says, free beer tomorrow. Then you come back tomorrow and the sign says, okay. <laughs> uh, I ask a couple of things. Is it logical to create a tier of three managers so that eventually you can have one? If you really want three managers, wouldn't it be easier to start with one? Also, is it realistic to create a new tier of management that would require either demotion or termination within three to five years? Or the other alternative is to create on top of this tier another tier for a city manager. Please do not tie the hands of future councils with this choice. Tonight, although you may pass this TO, you have yet a steep hill to climb. The fact that these positions were not budgeted will require a two-thirds vote of this council to move the money from the five cost centers where the money is currently committed for other uh, actions. This is a particular dangerous and risky move given that we are only two months into the budget year and yet already you must confront other unbudgeted needs. Tonight you will make decisions it's irrespective of this, with total almost a quarter of a million dollars in unbudgeted requests. Thus I ask you, take the time to compare. Take the time to provide direction to the Government Structure Committee so that, that this matter can be quickly deliberated early in the 2010 and 2011 legislative year and returned to you for consideration. I can assure you as chairman of that committee it will receive our top priority. Thank you. Exactly five minutes. Okay. Thank you. I'll, no, I didn't want to say no. And, and for a psychologist, you're not too bad of a salesman yourself. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next on our list is Vince Mua. If you'd like to come up to the front, please. Thank you. Thank you, Vince. Can I have your home address? 3017 Michigan Avenue. 3017? Yes. 3017 Michigan. And you will have five minutes, sir. Okay, thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Just uh, coming to add to uh, the structure of the Sheboygan County here. Well, first of all, I just want to bring up a little bit of my issue. I have, uh, we have an icing issue on my block, 30th in Michigan. So I have the city inspector came out and inspected. I got a letter beginning of the month. So as soon as I got that letter, I've been calling all month. So I, I hear one guy's out, one guy's covering. So, you know, I left messages a handful of time. I called, my wife's called. So, I mean, my handful and her handful, that's quite a bit of phone calls. I just expected a phone call back so I can kind of know which direction to go. You know, I've kind of exhausted my resources to who I should get a hold of. So I talked to, uh, ran to a couple other people I know around town. They said, well, you should probably go down to a meeting and bring it up. Maybe, you know, somebody will hear you out and maybe they'll take care of it. You know, my, I, I believe the storm uh, drain is, bl is plugged from the rain, the nice little bit of rain we got um, last month. So I believe that's, bl uh, that's probably to blame for the problem, but you know, for someone to call, I just cite all the neighbors, or my, myself and my neighbor, you know, that maybe it's our, our fault that it's, it's um, backed up like that. So that's my issue right there. So if, Anybody can help me out in that department, just let me know. Or get any, uh, get, uh, give me a name or somebody I can get in contact with, take care of that. Other than that, I, I hear uh, there's some restructuring going on. You know, I'd like to support that, you know, whatever sense, you know, wherever that direction that might be going. You know, I would like to see it run as a business. I myself, you know, work with a lot of people too. So, you know, like I said, it's just common courtesy. If I call you, give me a call back. So. That's my, that's my issue right there. 
So I appreciate your time to come up here and talk to everybody and kind of see how things work up here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Vince. Thank you. Or not. Or not. <laughs> Thank you, Vince. Please stay. <laughs> and last on our list is Joe Segal. Joe, can I have your home address, please? 1522 Alabama Avenue. And I don't know how I'm going to follow them gentlemen or hear it. They got all the figures, and what can I follow it with? <laughs> but I'm going to say, Mr. Mayor and Common Council, I wish you'd take your time on rejuvenating our government because it's going too fast. Take your time. This is a serious matter. I don't know. <laughs> If you realize it or not, but uh, I hope this doesn't get shoved down our throat like the ambulance did. And that, uh, a lot of people don't know we have to pay extra for paramedics. Where, and for the upkeep of these ambulances, where does the money come from? Now we had a private ambulance, nobody complained about it, but we had to push this ambulance deal on us. And now they want a pump, a pumper truck. Where is this money coming from? I thought we were so desperate that it's, we, we lay, they laid off how many in the other departments? What about the rest of our city? I, uh, don't get me wrong, I ain't pushing, I ain't against the fire department, but we gotta do first things first, and this is going too fast. Now maybe the ambulance which should have been, I feel should have been put to a referendum but we didn't have no choice in that. Is this gonna, this should be put in a referendum if they're that serious about it? Or is this getting to be political? Or is it already? Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe. That is it for Public Forum. Thank you everybody for speaking at Public Forum this evening. Um, President Gisha has a uh, short issue here known as the uh, Financial Information Forum, or as we've dubbed it, the FIFE. <laughs> President Kisha. Thank you. I'll be brief. Um, and uh, if uh, Your Honor doesn't mind, I'll just turn my back and direct Certainly. this to the council. Thank you. Somewhat improper based on a rule. Everyone was supplied with a uh, form uh, to look at. This has been worked out with uh, uh, City Clerk Richards and Finance Director Terry Hansen. The purpose of this form, as it says in the top, is to accompany all resolutions and ordinances that require the expenditure of funds. Uh, let me just tell you what it's trying to accomplish and what it's, uh, it's hoped to accomplish. And by doing that, I can probably use an example uh, that's best. You have in your packet under document 2326 a, um, a resolution authorizing the purchase of some Air Street Sweepers Less Trade from the Motor Vehicle Division. This was prepared by our um, city um, purchaser. On the back, he's actually filled out the form to kind of give you an example. Oftentimes, we as aldermen and citizens see documents come through the council. Last week, I'll use the example of the uh, purchasing of new police cars. The obvious question is, is it budgeted or is it not budgeted? It's never shown on the documents. A form accompanying this gives citizens and aldermen an idea as to whether where these monies are coming from, if they were budgeted in our budget, is there any amount of money left after this expenditure, and if it isn't budgeted, please explain where the <coughs> funds are coming from. Does it require additional staff time? Are there other additional expenses? It's a fairly short form, but as aldermen, sometimes you may find your name on documents as well maybe because you're a committee chairman, maybe because you had interest in a specific subject. Well, this actually has that person in the city who's trying to do the right thing and get those documents in actually have contact with you because this document requires your signature as an alderman and my signature <coughs> as an alderman for the expenditure of funds that you've reviewed this if in fact it's filled out by a department head or if it hasn't been filled out by a department head, it's been filled out by you. And this, uh, this form is to just give better information to the council to individual aldermen when their names get put on things and to the general public who are watching and are here uh, who often see things in our agenda about the expenditure of funds and the obvious question is, did you plan for this? Did the city plan for the expenditure of these funds? This answers all those questions. It also gives a heads up to our finance department to know if an unbudgeted item is coming through uh, that they have to plan for that 
and uh, it, it, it should involve some interaction between the finance department and the all department head before it goes any further. Um, there is a resolution tonight that I'm going to ask to be, uh, um, actually there isn't a resolution. A resolution will follow. This is kind of a test case. We're hoping everybody gets on board with this. Um, there will be a resolution introduced for your consideration that makes us a requirement uh, in, our, in our code, um, in our ordinances. Actually, it'll be, uh, it's not an ordinance change, just a resolution requiring that all expenditure of funds have a document that accompanies this. But if everybody uh, could just take a look at this and any sort of additional feedback uh, from it and begin using it, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, President Gish. Uh, this is a, uh, a big move toward uh, additional uh, fiscal transparency in the city. I, I support it 100%. Thank you. Oh, now my favorite part, the <coughs> mayor's announcements. Uh, we have a few items here tonight, all of them uh, good and lighthearted in a way. Uh, number one, St. Baldrick's Day. I don't know if everybody's familiar with it. So take off on uh, St. Patrick's Day. However, it's held the following Sunday from St. Patrick's Day. Uh, St. Baldrick's is spelled B-A-L-D-R-I-C-K-S, kind of like Patrick's, but bald in the front. Uh, this is a uh, fundraiser that benefits uh, childhood cancer research. And uh, the idea is you join a team. I, myself, I am on the uh, Anna's Rainbow Team, which is Anna Tarnowski, who is a uh, young uh, uh, person that uh, goes to school with my children. Anna has had cancer for a couple of years. As a matter of fact, her brother uh, lit our uh, Christmas tree this year, our city Christmas tree. And I have decided to uh, join her team. And on uh, March 21st, I am going to uh, lose my hair for the cause. Uh, my head will be shaved at a place known as Urbane um, on 8th and Michigan. I've never been there myself. Um, but. Uh, um, I, I am trying to raise $10,000 myself for the cause. I'm only about a tenth of the way there. However, I've only been working on it for a few days. Um, if anybody would like to uh, donate, um, the website is www.stbaldricks.org. Um, I believe that's it. Stbaldricks.org is correct. Um, my ID number 378266, or you can call the mayor's office um, and get on board with this. It's a great cause. So if I'm a little bit uh, different here on the 22nd of, uh, of March, remember it's all for a good cause. So that is that. Um, another issue, uh, Sheboygan County Food Bank. Roundy's, uh, which is closed at the moment, uh, started today. Um, they're looking for volunteers to help move uh, a lot of the items in Roundies to the County Food Bank. I'm looking for volunteers. Uh, it started today from 8.30 a.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. Uh, they are donating all of the leftover food in the Roundies store to the Food Bank. Great cause. Um, I will be there at least one day myself this week. Which one, I don't know. I have to uh, squeeze it into the schedule. Um, if you are interested, uh, dial 457-7272, extension 12. Uh, we've been getting a lot of calls on the 4th of July and Memorial Day parades. Uh, the 4th of July parade, it will be on Saturday the 3rd of July. All 4th of July activities will be on Saturday the 3rd. The parade, also the fireworks that evening, will be on the 3rd. So put that on your calendar. Uh, the official uh, 4th of July holiday, federal holiday, is on the 5th, which is Monday. Um, Johnsonville, again, will be sponsoring the fireworks, as they have in the past, and we thank them for that. Memorial Day Parade this year uh, is scheduled for Monday, May 31st at 9 o'clock a.m. That is being taken care of by uh, Jerry and uh, Ingrid Weniger again this year. And for everybody interested in participating in the parade, their number is 4589944. Last announcement is the census. Everybody will be receiving census forms in the mail, in the mail this week. Uh, we also have census workers that will be coming, uh, coming around, uh, banging on the doors of people that don't uh, return their forms. Uh, of course, uh, if you don't want somebody banging on your door, please return your form. It's very important that everybody in the city be counted. A lot of our, uh, our federal funding is dependent upon population and income of population. And if we don't count people, obviously we don't, uh, cannot participate in that funding. So that is uh, starting this week. Look for the forms in your mail. Alderperson Clayunas. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to remind everybody there's a committee of the whole meeting this Wednesday at 5.30. Um, 
we just had a meeting last week, so you might think you're off the hook for a while, but we have another one on Wednesday, 5.30. Thank you, Jean. Thank you, too. That is all I have for Mayor's announcements tonight. We will go down to the consent agenda. President Gishin. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and file all reports of officers, accept and adopt all reports of committees, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. We have a motion and a second. Consent agenda is 23-1 through 23-13. We have Alderman Bowers has buzzed in. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, 23-2. Um, Alderman Bowers, can you grab your microphone, please? Oh, yeah. That'll help I'm looking at uh, 23.2, uh, and although there isn't any address on this, I was wondering on uh, further documents that come before us, I noticed there were some that were uh, uh, removing the taxes or were not going to collect the taxes on, and they're all tax numbers. If we could have the addresses of these put in our, uh, on the agenda, it would, it would help a lot. So. I don't know where this is. Uh, this 23-2 is uh, located. So, is there any way uh, an address could be put on these? It's on the next page, Alderman Bowers. It's 4539 South Taylor Drive. Okay. The Thank actual you. easement it's a, it's is on attached. The, it's on the document itself. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Boren. Aye. Bowers. Decker, Aye. Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Heideman, Koth, Kittleson, Kleunas, Montemayor, Rinfleisch, Zurich, Vanderweel, Aye. Vu, Aye. and Wangaman. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. I misspoke. I had 23-1 through 23-13, oh, I believe is what I said. Okay, yep. Thank you. Okay, communications and petitions, 23-14 to be referred. Reports of Officers 2, 23-15, will be held for... Oh. oh, that will be held for a... The other trucks. The other trucks coming up later on in the, uh, in the meeting here. Um, 23-16 through 23-23 will be referred. 23-24, resolutions introduced 3 by Alderman... Gisha directing that the various committees commissions either be merged, eliminated, or reassigned at the end of the current council year. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. This is in an effort to somewhat streamline the 59 different committees the city has. Uh, there's been some discussion on a couple of them and some additional ideas. I ask that it be referred to the Public Works Committee. We have a motion to refer to the Public Works Committee. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Under discussion? There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Will be referred to Public Works. 2325 through 2327 to be referred. Reports of Committee 6. 23-28 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operators license number 8474 based upon his failure to include all relevant convictions on his application and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Under discussion, Mayor, is uh, Dana Musis here tonight? It's not here, Mayor. Please continue. Uh, Mr. Musis had uh, two opportunities to appear before the committee and chose not to appear before the committee, so lack of cooperation with the committee and therefore the uh, committee voted us unanimously to deny the license. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Any further discussion? There is none. Roll call, please. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heideman. Koff. Aye. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Zurich. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Vu. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. And Boren. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 23-29 <coughs> .29 through 23-30 to be referred. Reports of Committee 7. 23-31. This will be coming up later in the This agenda. is going to... 
We can hold this, yes. Yes, we will hold that for later on in the agenda. And we can hold the next. Uh, 2331 by PPNS. And, and 32. 32. And 32 we're going to hold also? <laughs> yes. We will hold both of those until later on in the meeting? Yes. Reports of committees 8, 23-33 by finance, recommending lifting the hiring freeze in order to hire three firefighter paramedics in the Sheboygan Fire Department and passing the attached substitute resolution. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted and the pa and substitute. Substitute resolution. And pardon me, and the substitute resolution be put upon its passage. Thank you. Second. We have a motion and a second. Under discussion? Alderman Rinflesh? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, on the substitute resolution um, uh, from the Finance Committee, uh, the resolution asks for the closing of the, the um, fire station number five, or actually that the fire chief be asked to close the station number five, uh, the south side one and south 18th street. Um, my impression in, in that joint meeting uh, uh, with public production and safety was that um, the funding uh, as planned for the three plus the retiree replacement, as including the pumper truck, uh, would be able to keep that station open. Um, so I make a motion that we strike that be for the resolved the fire safe chief close fire station number five located at 4504 south 18th street and make all appropriate personnel and service changes necessary to close the fire station the reason for that uh, um, amendment would be uh, simply in that south side when there is a train um, coming through that area i'm not willing to put my constituents at uh, an increased ri uh, risk of uh, death um, or or property damage from fire um, yeah, if they have to go all the way around. So I'm asking for that to be struck. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Rinflesh. And we have a second on the amendment to strike, be it further resolved, um, about the closing of fire station number five. Under discussion on the amendment. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, I would like a clarification from the fire chief uh, exactly what what this would do by keeping this fire station over, keep, keeping this fire station open with, the, uh, with what we're gonna do as far as hiring and et cetera. Thank you. We have uh, Fire Chief Jeff Herman. Jeff, you wanna pull the mic up or towards you a little bit? Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. Um, Alderman Bourne, if I could get a clarification on that question, I was walking up. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Alderman Rinfleisch mentioned that it was said in one of the committee meetings that if we uh, hire the four people that, uh, what exactly did you say, Alderman Rinfleisch? I just question whether if we, uh, if we keep the station open and with hiring of the three, if your personnel is going to be, your personnel needs are going to be met to keep the south side station open without the overtime problem. Okay, uh, one of the issues that uh, part of the funding for the, the three firefighters that you're lifting the hiring freeze for is coming out of closing that fire station. We are reducing our officer staff by roughly 33%. The savings in, those, in that pay is part of what you're funding the three firefighters for. So that would have to be restored to keep that station open. Uh, in addition, there would be some overtime issues. That answer your question? Yeah, my question. Um, next we have Alderman Bowers. Thank you. By leaving uh, fire station number five, we're not adding uh, any more money to, uh, the, to the budget? By leaving the station open, mm -hmm. we would have to add money to the You'd budget. You'd have to have Correct. more money. Plus the pumper truck, which is a half a million dollars. Plus three firemen, which is going to run, what, uh, 300000 About 135000 So we're looking at 600 and some thousand dollars additional. The 135 is funded from savings and uh, in the negotiations and savings in the budget. The savings in negotiations? Correct. Uh, negotiations before the contracts were signed or after? 
the negotiations of the contract signing of the which contract were, which were signed after the budget was passed firefighters union gave back two percent of their wages which was seventy nine thousand dollars <coughs> so in what we're looking at is not any additional money correct for the funding of the firefighters there's not any additional money it's in my budget chief are you aware of uh, any of our firefighters are members of other fire departments? Of other paid departments? No, uh, they pardon? are not. There are no firefighters on Sheboygan Fire Department on any other paid uh, department. Any other fire department? I didn't say paid. I have no knowledge, no. You have no knowledge of any of your men being volunteers in any other departments? There are members that are part of the EMS portion of volunteer fire departments. Is this a violation of their union contract? I do not believe so. You don't it's believe so? It's not recommended. It's not recommended. Point of order, Your Honor, we're, we're discussing, that's not pertinent to the discussion on the um, I, I agree. Uh, right now we're discussing the amendment on the resolution. We're not uh, discussing uh, individual firefighters. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. Um, next we have uh, President Gisha. Thank you. Chief, if we could just clarify it one more time, because I think it's a question that I've heard all the way around. I've heard that, hey, if we, if we hire the three, I know the fourth is just replacing a retiree. If we hire the three, uh, we don't have to close any, and we get the pumper, we don't have to close anything. If you could just kind of clarify that, because I think that's a question that's, I think everybody's just looking for a solid, from you, recommendation as to what we should do and what that effect would be, and what would be the effect if we didn't do it. Uh, once again, part of the savings that are paying for the three firefighters are coming from the closing of that station. And that being, um, there is a captain no longer required. There are two lieutenants no longer required. Um, that comes to roughly $21,000. Uh, there are three drivers that are no longer required, which is a savings of about $3,600. Uh, one less vehicle on the road is about uh, $5,000 worth of fuel and maintenance cost, and then the utilities for the station. Um, so if you're going to keep that station open, uh, we have to have a captain and lieutenants there, so that amount would have to be restored to the budget. Um, so that would be an additional amount. The uh, rescue pumper is really a separate issue, uh, which also saves three firefighters and helps with our staffing, which reduces overtime. Um, by, by saving three firefighters, you mean it actually eliminates three positions, correct? Correct. Thank you. Next we have uh, Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. <coughs> uh, Chief, what would happen if uh, the ambulance service went away and you have four people that are dedicated to the ambulance and the ambulance service went away and we lease the pumper for you. Would that solve your personnel problems? Now I realize there's the factor that we may lose some revenue because we're, you know, the ambulance service is bringing in some revenue. I haven't heard, I haven't heard a, a, a figure from our finance director as what it would cost us actually to get out of the ambulance service. But my question is if the ambulance service went away and you could dedicate those four people to your personnel needs and we lease the pumper, does that solve your personnel problems? Thank you. <clears throat> to answer the first part of your question, those four people that were dedicated to, to the ambulance are four of the six people that I'm short right now. The second part of your question, yes, if the ambulance went away, um, I'd have more people to spread amongst the stations and with the rescue pumper, uh, that would solve our manning issues. So then we wouldn't have to hire any of these uh, three and the person that's retiring. That's correct. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Next, we have Alderperson Kittleson. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, Chief, I'm, I'm looking here. Um, the savings from the closing of the station, that's $15,739 recurring costs. That's what it costs us to keep that station going? Uh, I believe that is a partial figure of the officer's salary. Partial figure. But that figure. is recurring costs that will not be there anymore. So just, just to make the, I, I can't, one more time to make this perfectly clear to me, we, 
what, what, what was in my thought before is that we hire, we, we get three firefighters, possibly a fourth from a retirement. We ha have a fire, a, a pumper truck. We wouldn't need to close the station. That was my understanding. We can't, that's not, that's, that's no not longer correct true. Because some of the monies that I took from closing that are funding the three people that we are looking to hire. So that would have to be replaced in the budget, which is not uh, budget neutral then at that point. So there's no way that we can keep from, how do we keep, what's the scenario, how can we play this out so we don't have to close the fire station? Those monies would have to be put back into my budget, or not, or not, actually not put back into my budget, but not used for the hiring of the three people. Of the three guys. Okay. Thank you. I think, I think that would probably result in, in uh, overtime issues in the very near future keep keeping a fifth station open will cause additional overtime because our men are spread out farther and they need to keep the minimum amount amount of people in each station so it is a an additional funding issue and an overtime issue thank you alderperson kittleson next we have alderman rinfleisch thank you mr mayor um the uh, I'm not pleased with the finances of, of what we're, the situation we're sitting in, as we all know, um, and uh, simply raising taxes to fill the hole, something that I'm not willing to do. Uh, I guess some of the questions that we've dealt with uh, is the, the animal service has a role in this as well. Um, and the understanding that we had received that in the last two years, the animal service had brought in net $700,000, so that's what we discussed in the committee. Um, and without the ambulance service, that, that's the hole that we'd have to find, $350,000 each year thus far. Hopefully, more once we get better collections from, uh, from our collection service, uh, which we're looking at right now. Um, but if that's not enough to keep the fire station, which is what we're based on, that fact, um, you know, I, there's nothing I can do about that. I, I can't pull money out of thin air. I understand that. Um, however, uh, it seems to me a little short-sighted uh, for the future to close that station in particular. Uh, the, it seems to me that if you look at a map, the area of growth for the future in Sheboygan is south. Is uh, Any business park that we want to develop would be south. Uh, and I don't know how easy it's going to be to, to get uh, business in a business park that we don't have easy access to for a fire station, uh, which we do currently right now uh, on the south side of town. Uh, annexation issues, we've talked about that. We can use, we can use the fire service, we can use water uh, as a tool to uh, entice uh, town of, of Wilson to come into the city. Uh, it seems to me, though, that if we close that particular state, what we're saying to them is that we want your tax revenue, but we don't really care about your lives or your property beyond the tax revenue. Um, uh, who would be willing to, to become a member of the city when they're not right now for those particular purposes? Um, so I will uh, retract my motion to close the South 15th station then, or the motion to strike, excuse me, the, the language on there. Um, and if the second agrees, but then replace that with then the close the uh, downtown fire station instead. <laughs> um, we had a, uh, this, the motion was to strike the amendment to close fire station number five. Uh, who seconded that amendment? Would you like to withdraw that? Okay, so that is withdrawn. And we have a motion to uh, replace the closing of fire station number five. Uh, with the downtown fire station, which is fire station number one. Safety move in second? There's only a motion so far, no, no second. No, I motion, no, no second. We have a motion to uh, close the downtown fire station, fire station number one. Do we have a second on that? I'll second. We have a second on fire station number one. Under discussion on this amendment. First in. Alderman Hanna, you're left over from last time. Would you like to discuss that? Nope. Okay, next we have Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, <laughs> Chief, I think you send, sent out in your, in your memo that clothing, clothing station one, as far as coverage from the other available fire stations, is actually easier for you to cover that eventuality than it actually is to close the South, South 18th Street. Is that correct? So from a logistics standpoint, you can cover this with your other three stations better than the one on South 18th Street? I would say that that's a correct assumption that I believe um, whichever station you close, there's going to be extended response times to that area. In the downtown area, it would be 
not as severe as the Station 5 area because we have three stations that converge on this area. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Uh, next we have President Kisha. Thank you, Your Honor. This is a tough issue and I feel for a lot of the comments that Alderman uh, Reinflesch talked about, about funding issues or closing a fire station is not easy for any community. It stinks. Uh, the chief sent out a memo to the council members, uh, informational memo, I think on Friday, and um, I'm inclined to go with the professional opinion on the closing of South 18th Street, and uh, it's only been there since, can somebody help me? Five years, I believe. Five, five years. Uh, four. Four years. And the city's been around how many years, Alderperson Wangaman? So we've gone about a hundred and about 153 years without it. Uh, the train tracks were there during probably a good third of that time. And we are not, unfortunately, in a position to annex the properties, which is what it was built for. There is no additional growth going on of any major site on the, uh, way in the south side of Sheboygan. So um, as difficult as it is, uh, I won't support the motion to close the downtown station for the reasons the chief gave Alderman Bourne and because of his uh, communication to us on Friday. Thank you, President Gisha. If I can uh, have a, a small amount of input here. Um, you know, nobody wants to close a fire station. If, if we had funds available, it wouldn't even be a question. However, um, we have to look at the number of calls coming out of fire stations um, and the amount of time in, in response that, that uh, may be added, which we, we did those numbers, I believe, earlier in the week. Um, and closing the downtown fire station with uh, the number of calls in the downtown fire station, which was over 2,000. And uh, the south side was 400, I believe, in that, you know, round figures. Um, the closing of the downtown station would add significant more delay in overall time. Um, another thing we have to look at downtown is the um, rescue boat that the, is run by the fire department um, is operated by the downtown station. Uh, another thing we have to look at is on the south side right now, um, which this is not my vote obviously, this is up to the alderman, uh, but on the south side right now, we are actually understaffed in the station. We have an engine there, a fire truck, that takes four people to operate, yet we only have two people there at any given time. Um, when it comes to uh, rescue calls, um, two people can, can handle it. But when it comes to fires on the south side, have to send people from the 18th and Mead location to meet them to fight a fire with that fire rig that is presently on the south side because we're only staffed at 50% of what they need there to fight fires. So that just needs to be taken into consideration. I'm, you know, I, I just want the, the facts to be out there. Um, and, and, you know, obviously this is the alderman's vote. So we have Alderman Vu. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. I will not support uh, the uh, amendment for closing station one in downtown because the downtown area mostly are just old houses and there are more chances for houses to get burned. The south side, there's newer houses. Most of them are newer, so there's less chance of fires and getting fire. So then closer than downtown is a bad idea, so I will not support that. Thank you, Alderman Vu. Next, we have Vice President Heidemann. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Um, at Finance, I did vote to uh, close the station. But since then, I've uh, spoken to a number of my constituents. And uh, I believe firmly that it's not the responsibility of Finance to pick what station to go, but possibly that this should be referred back to Public Protection and Safety, where they can uh, have more of a discussion and look at, all, uh, at some of other options, as opposed to Finance making this decision. So I will. Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to uh, close any station, but of course I don't want to close one on the south side either. So, Is that a uh, motion? I'll make that a motion. A motion to refer to the public document protection to and safety. public protection and safety? Mm -hmm. We have a motion on the floor now. We, first we have a motion on amending to close the downtown firehouse. Mm -hmm. And a second on that. Um, Alderman Rinfleisch. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, if it's the will of the council to refer back, I'll withdraw my motion at this point in time if it goes to public protection and safety. Alder Person Montemayor, withdrawal. Okay, we are back to the original document. We have a motion to refer to public protection and safety. Do we have a second on that? Second. We have a motion and a second, second by Alderman Surik, to refer this document back to public protection and safety regarding uh, closing, uh, regarding hiring the three, funding the hiring of the three positions and closing the Southside Firehouse. <laughs> Under discussion on that? President Kisha. Thank you. Um, I appreciate uh, Vice President Heidemann's uh, suggestion on sending it back to PP&S uh, rather than it coming out of finance. I would just ask the chief, would you make a different recommendation coming out of PP&S than coming out of finance than what we're hearing tonight? Uh, absolutely not. The document that I sent out on Friday is my opinion. That will be my opinion in the next meeting. So if, you, if this is referred back to PP&S, you would be making the same recommendation you're making right now. Correct. So I would ask uh, what the purpose of that referral would be when we're here to solve community problems and make decisions. I, we're here, it's in front of us, we have all the information, there will be no additional change from the chief, so I will not vote to refer it to PP&S because I think we are paid to make decisions, good, bad, or otherwise. Thank you, President Gisha. The discussion is on referring to PP&S under discussion. Alder Person Montemayor. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Um, I agree with Alderman Gish on this. I think we should make the decision tonight, unless, of course, PPNS would simply make a different decision on which uh, fire station to close. But I think we should definitely go ahead with lifting the hiring freeze. I think um, Chief Herman has to get on with this, or all of a sudden it's going to be too late in the season and we're going to have lots of trouble with the overtime budget. Thank you, Alder Person Montemayor. On referring to PP&S, Alder, Alder Person Koff. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I'd just like to get the comment in because I was trying to get it in earlier. Um, I would just like to reiterate with Alderman Bourne that we would not have to hire any more firemen. We would not have to close fire stations if we got rid of the ambulance service. Correct. That's correct, but Period. you'd have a $700,000 hole in this year's budget or depending on which month you but shut the, the ambulance service down. all the fire stations will be open. Unless you take mm -hmm. that money yes. out of my budget Thank and you. I have to get rid of more firefighters, then no, we'd have to close two stations. Thank you, all the person. Kath, President Gisha. Thank you. Just to clarify from the finance standpoint, that is absolutely true. It, it, uh, as the chief stated, uh, you wouldn't be because you'd be at a skeleton crew walking out firemen. You'd be walking out 10 DPW workers. You'd be walking out five people out of City Hall five people out of someplace else. The ambulance service provides revenue that doesn't go to the fire department, it goes to the general fund. So in protection of the general fund and in the interest of being full disclosure, so the council is making decisions based on fact and not emotion and not half fact, those dollars employ about a dozen people in the city of Sheboygan. Take them away, that's fine. The council has a right to do whatever they wish, but then be prepared to find 12 layoffs in the city. Thank you, President Gisha. We are still discussing sending this to PP&S. Any further discussion on sending this to PP&S? Do a roll call vote on that, please. Uh, the question, the uh, an I vote will send this document to PP&S as is. Okay, Decker. Aye. Gisha. No. Hannah. No. Heidemann. Aye. Koff. No. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunas? No. <clears throat> Montemayor? No. Linfleisch? Aye. Sirk? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? No. And Bowers? No. Eight eyes, seven no's. Document goes to PPNS for further discussion. Okay, where were we? 2334. 2334. By finance, recommending providing
concrete measurable guidelines to a green team of city employees appointed by the mayor to reduce energy, fuel, and product use in city departments in 2010. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. And the resolution be put upon. And the resolution please be put upon its passage. Uh, I would like to refer to Alderperson Clayunas, who was a, a great part of putting this together, and uh, ask her if she would uh, to explain the question in finance and, and how uh, it's her understanding of how the city will be handling it with their management team. Thank you, President Gisha. Gisha, Alderperson Clayunas. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this is a resolution that uh, just gives some general guidelines to the city employees and, and the people who manage city buildings and resources to uh, do some cost cutting, simple conservation things. Uh, they're not uh, new ideas at all. It's just making this a formal resolution that employees are asked to follow. And I'm asking the mayor to appoint uh, individual employees in different departments to be responsible for the monitoring of this uh, resolution so that people actually follow through. For example, turning off lights, turning off computers, um, <coughs> using paper more wisely, uh, not um, having heat set, a, set above a certain temperature or uh, cold settings in the summer set uh, below a certain temperature. All these things are common practices in many businesses in this city already and I'm just bringing it into the city, uh, into the city government uh, policy and procedures so that we can also save money. If we do follow and we can uh, save um, costs by t uh, 10%, which the county has done by following similar guidelines, we could save the city in a year's time $230,652 in our utility and um, fuel costs. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Alderman Person Clayunas. Alderman Hanna. Well, thank you. Uh, when I was on the school board, we enacted very similar principles. Our budget was larger, uh, but I think the quarter of a million dollar savings that the older person presented is very realistic. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Our city attorney, Steve McLean. Um, I think this is a fine idea in, in concept, but I guess I've got a couple selfish issues. Uh, I've worked for the city for 20 some odd years and uh, never had to get a space heater uh, but when we moved into City Hall, uh, my position on the west side there, uh, those aren't energy efficient windows. I had to go out and buy myself a space heater and put it down under my, my desk this winter because it was cold. Uh, if, if you could guarantee me that you're going to put in energy efficient windows, uh, I give up the space heater, but uh, uh, I, I find... You know, I haven't needed a space heater for all these years, but I, I need one in that spot, I, I believe. Uh, you've got coffee makers not allowed, and that's, I take that rather personally, too. I'm a, <laughs> a rather heavy coffee drinker. I bought my own coffee maker. I buy my own coffee. Uh, I make it in the office. It uh, is there. I provide it uh, when we have committee meetings and so forth to others if they wish. Uh, to say that, that coffee maker is not allowed, you know, that's fine if that's what the council wants to do, but uh, it's, I view that as sort of an inconvenience to me. But uh, everything else in here, I don't have a big problem with, uh, other than uh, you've got reset margins narrower on all four sides of policy to reduce number of sheets used. Uh, we use, city letterhead and there is a margin on that paper and it wouldn't make any sense to uh, reset the margins to uh, with all that letterhead we've got um, you know I understand again uh, all the McClay owners don't get me wrong I think the, these things are fine in concept but I just personally have a problem with some of them uh, when you're saying those things are not allowed. Uh, you put in some energy efficient windows on the west side of the building, I'd have less of a problem with that. Uh, the heat I've noticed also we've got somewhat of an issue with uh, as far as, uh, and, and I, I don't mean to get nitpicky about this stuff, but uh, I guess I take it 
if the council is going to say these things aren't allowed, that's, that's going to be it. That we'll abide by that. But uh, some of these things, uh, this isn't a perfect building. It's not really that energy efficient of a building. And uh, I know their public works is trying to adjust the heaters, uh, the, the radiators in our office. But uh, there's some days when uh, they don't heat like, like they're supposed to. Uh, and it it does get cold in there. Uh, so that, that's all I've got. That's my comment. I, I just wanted to get that out before this got acted on, just so I had my say. Just look forward to summertime when your office is 90 degrees. Think, just think warm. <laughs> Um, no, uh, we, do, we do need to spend uh, um, some capital improvements money on, on especially this building here. Uh, the, the, the floor plan of this building right now uh, does not fit the original heating system. We have some offices that have a radiator as big as this one along the wall here um, that the office is only about twice the size of the radiator. And unfortunately, there's other areas that were cut off by the radiator as the additions have gone on and that, are, that are ice cold. You know, generally this... Uh, one side of the building is too hot, the other side is too cold. Uh, in summertime, it's vice versa. So we do, we do need to put some money into, uh, into, uh, uh, into some tech, not new technologies uh, in City Hall as far as realizing some, uh, some efficiencies um, when it comes to energy use and definitely these windows. Uh, even if you lock them, when you get a good wind, they're still whistling. So, uh, you know, we do, we do need to put some, uh, some capital expenditures into, uh, into improving City Hall. Alder Person Clayunas. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, thank you, M Attorney McLean, for your interest and general, um, uh, just say, concern about this. Uh, just to emphasize, these are guidelines to be followed as much as possible. Um, I would hope you could share your coffee maker with the whole department, and I think you do. Yeah. And that's what it is, that everybody doesn't have their own little coffee pot, their own little refrigerator, their own little hot plate, whatever it is, uh, set up in a little kitchen next to their desk when there are some facilities <laughs> in, the, in the building that could be used. So I'm just using, saying this is guidelines, and let's negotiate. And let's say, you know, if you can't, because the windows let all the draft in, maybe you negotiate something else in terms of savings that you can do in your department so that we can reach a 10% savings. Thank, Thank you, you, Jean. Uh, Sue? Um, just as another department head wanting to weigh in, um, <laughs> I hate coffee, let's get this straight. <laughs> I think that I could probably speak for all the department heads that we are all very concerned and want to do this as much as we can. Um, but a good example is in our office, you know, it, and everybody will tell everybody this, that the heating and the cooling and everything is out of control. In the winter, when it snows, we have a pile of snow in one corner that we could build a snowman with. So, I mean, you know, you have those issues. But on the other hand, for us and for all the departments, we're trying everything that we can to try to fit these guidelines. But there are going to be some that we just simply cannot do because of whatever reason. There's just things. But we would just know that we will very diligently work on this just so that you know that that's where the department heads stand. And, and there are some, some issues in the future as we, as we go through the, our, our min, minor remodeling of City Hall that we've been taking part in, which we haven't really addressed the mechanicals. Um, but even a, uh, a, central, uh, a central lunch room wouldn't be a bad idea for City Hall. We could put a couple large refrig refrigerators in there and maybe get rid of some of the uh, refrigerators in every office. There are some options. So We will work toward that. Uh, my goal is to... Uh, is to have these discussions in our department head meetings and to have uh, department heads uh, in charge of their own individual efforts in their own departments and uh, they can uh, um, obviously uh, refer that uh, uh, task to somebody in their department but they will be responsible for their own departments in this matter. Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call please. Gisha? Aye. Hannah, Aye. Heidemann, Aye. Koth, Aye. Kittleson, Clayunas, Montemayor, Rinfleisch, Surik, Vanderweel, Aye. Vu, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Boren, Aye. Bowers, Aye. and Decker. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries 23-35 by finance recommending authorized entering into contract for the manufacture and purchase 
of one new rescue pumper apparatus and related equipment for the Sheboygan Fire Department and passing the attached substitute resolution. Uh, before we go on, can we do something, just back up one? Certainly. We've got two documents that we All held, that have to, have to remember, that we the... want to file. That would be 2331, 2332, which were duplicates of Alderman Clyunas's, just to file. Okay. okay, thank you. Motion and a second to file uh, the duplicate documents regarding the green effort. Yep. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Now to 2335. Um, President Gisha. Thank you. Uh, I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted and the substitute resolution be put upon its passage. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Your Honor, if I may, I'd like to ask uh, uh, Fire Chief to come on up to uh, give an overall explanation of uh, what we're doing and perhaps the timeliness that maybe didn't, that some felt didn't exist on the last issue regarding the fire station may exist here. And if he could explain that, I would appreciate it. Chief Herman. Thank you, President Kishin. Once again, thank you. Uh, yes, this is a timeliness issue, um, and it's related to a couple things. Uh, the vehicle replacement schedule that we have in place um, had us replacing a vehicle last year. That replacement was not done, so this really is a normally scheduled uh, replacement. But by replacing two vehicles with one, what this will do is eliminate the scheduled replacement that was to take place in 2013. So this will really push back um, any future replacements to 2017. And that all is, again, tied into what you do with the stations. But at, and to go to the timeliness of it, our, our cost uh, for that new pumper is only gar guaranteed until, I think it's March 8th. Uh, after that, the price goes up uh, roughly $20,000. So if you are, in fact, intending to make this purchase, uh, timeliness is of the essence. Um, if I can add, uh, regarding the rescue pumper, uh, the rescue pumper uh, replaces a uh, pumper truck and a rescue vehicle. A uh, rescue pumper can be operated by three firefighters, firefighter paramedics, uh, whereas the other two vehicles require four people. In essence, this eliminates one person, or one position, uh, which translates into three people. Uh, it does not eliminate them. We do not have to rehire them in order to, in order to uh, be on the other vehicles. Um, we do have a lease schedule uh, that is going to be worked out on this, on this purchase, provided the council decides to go ahead with it. The lease schedule will not require a budget amendment because the lease will not have to be until one year after, is it after the order or after the receipt of the truck? I believe it's one year after the receipt. One year after the receipt of the truck will be the first lease payment, so it will not require a budget amendment for 2010. However, as we all know, it will incur a cost in 2011, but we are replacing two vehicles with one, uh, eliminating three positions. Um, to me, it makes financial sense, but I'm just the mayor. And it's up to you. If I could add once again, there are reoccurring savings to uh, replacing two vehicles with one. We would be eliminating three officer positions again uh, from one of those vehicles. That is an annual savings of roughly $21,000. Three driver positions again, about $3,600. And uh, the maintenance costs. So with the uh, reduction in some overtime, if the other three hires have been passed, uh, we would have been able to make that lease payment out of our budget. Thank you, Chief. Alderman Bowers. <clears throat> I just want to, perhaps you can't answer this because you didn't become Chief till afterwards. Why wasn't this in the original budget that was submitted to the public protection back in November? I, maybe you can't answer that, I don't know. This concept came about after that, and is actually a proposal of mine after being chief. Okay. Number two is I have some problems with just awarding it to uh, Pierce. Uh, they're the Cadillac. Maybe we should be looking at others in bids. Can this go out on bids? It can go out on bids. Uh, typically, it has not in the last few purchases that we've made. Uh, Pierce is a very quality product. There are some long-term savings in maintenance and 
uh, because of the proximity that Pierce Manufacturing is to Sheboygan. The only other vehicle that we have that is not a Pierce is a HME Darley. Um, I believe it's made in Michigan. Uh, makes for maintenance and getting parts and everything a lot more expensive down the line. So in the long term, it is the cheapest route to go. Okay. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, this purchase of this, this or the lease of this uh, truck chief uh, really doesn't have anything to do with the other one that's going back to public protection safety under any scenario that public protection and safety recommends to the council, you're still going to need this, still going to be advantageous to get this pumper. Is that correct? That's correct. Long-term savings and, and feasibility of the fire department, and uh, we need this pumper. Correct. And the potential that we're going to get from selling the other two vehicles, ninety dollars to $100,000, that is going to take care of the lease payment for 2011 and partly also for 2012. Uh, I guess it would be a question for... Uh, President Gisha, uh, would, the sale, would the proceeds of that sale go into the general fund or could we target that to, to pay the lease or it's all going to come out of the same pocket? Thank you, Alderman Bourne. I believe uh, in reviewing the lease documentation that uh, as most leases are in the state of Wisconsin, you can't prepay them. Mm -hmm. If we were to sell it right away before we consummated the transaction, then we would know what the balance is and the lease is based on that balance. So uh, your idea of, of thinking of it in a way of making the payments for the next two years is probably more accurate, your first thought, mm -hmm. um, as uh, all these payments will be in arrears, hopefully we'll have time to sell them. Mm -hmm. uh, and that would probably, I, I agree with your thought process on that. Thank you. Thank you, President Gisha and Alderman Boren. Uh, Alderman Bowers? Uh, you say we're gonna, get 90,000 for our used pumper, is that Res right? Rescue vehicle. Uh, can, you can't guarantee the 90,000 though. Is there any way we can sell that pumper and then buy the, uh, the new pumper? What happens if we don't sell that pumper for 90,000? Where's that money gonna come from? Be an extra $90,000. The lease amount that is in this document is exclusive of selling that pumper. Anything that we get for that pumper reduces that amount. Re reduces the, the 454000 Correct. That lease payment is based on 454000 If we're able to sell the rescue vehicle and the pumper for 90000 or 100000 that reduces that lease amount by that, that amount down so to roughly 350000 So the $58,000 annual payment that we would be making would be reduced by, let's say, 90000 probably down to maybe 45000 Correct. Well, Potential. 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 And if we don't, then we have two pumpers. We've never had an issue selling our vehicles <coughs> when we've replaced them. So I don't anticipate it I think it you here. said in public protection you had two people looking at it? Uh, there are three currently three. now. Uh, is, is, are you going to have them bid on it? Close bid, or I don't know how you go about it. I this. believe that the uh, purchasing agent has a plan to advertise it with closed bids, and if we do not, uh, within Sheboygan County uh -huh. uh, first, if we do not get a bid that is sufficient, then it would go out to the state and nationally. Okay. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. <coughs> Thank you, Chief. Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth. No. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunis. Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? No. Wangaman? No. Boren? Aye. Bowers? No. Decker? Aye. And Gesha? Aye. 11 ayes, 4 noes. Motion carries. We've got to clear up the other two yeah. documents. Yeah, so we can have we just two. Uh, and 2336. Mm -hmm. We have duplicate documents, 23, was it 15 and 36? Yep. 23, 15, and 36, we have a motion to file. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second under discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? They are filed. 23, 37 lies over. Uh, 23, 38 will be held for 23, 40. 22, 
39 on matters laid over 11. Resolution number 185-09-10 by Alderperson Kittleson, extending the listing on the Little Red Schoolhouse at 1116 Huron from March 31st, 2010 through June 30th, 2010. <coughs> Alderperson Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I would move to put the resolu resolution upon its passage, please. <laughs> we have a motion to put it upon its passage. Do we have a second? We have a second under discussion. Uh, the new listing contract. Uh, this contract will w run through June 30th. We're just extending the listing for this. Thank you, Alderperson Kittleson. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? If there is none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law, 2339 lies over. 2340, an RC by Committee of the Whole, recommending amending section 29-75 of the 1975 Sheboygan Municipal Code, so as to delete the current table of organization and create the new table of organization and passing the attached substitute ordinance. Yes. Uh, 2229 on the Little Red Schoolhouse you'd like to discuss? Uh, no, 2339. Uh, 2339, that uh, lies over. To answer one of, uh, in regards to Alderman Bauer's uh, point earlier about these uh, properties where that were uh, uh, rescinding the assessments, uh, he wanted a, a list of the properties. I believe we had that in finance, and I couldn't locate my document today, but perhaps if the, if the city assessor could give us a document so that the alderman know which property goes with what property number okay. before the next meeting. Very good. Can we make a note of that? Sure. And Thank that you. was in finance. You're, you are correct. Okay, 2340, uh, we are back to Alderperson Clyunas. I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. To substitute ordinance. Substitute team. ordinance we put upon this passage. I'm sorry. That's okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second under discussion. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to make an amendment to the general ordinance document 570910. I would like to make an, uh, uh, I would like, I move to change section four of the document. Section four? W please. I move that the period be removed from the current end of this one particular sentence. Section four is made up of only one sentence. Um, and and uh, add the following words, and that this position be a three-year appointment period. So the entire text of section four would now read, the salary range for the director of operations shall be established at 82,989 to 112,083 and that this position be a three-year appointment. Thank you, President Gisha. We have a second by President Hanna. If I may speak on this, I know that there was some concern uh, that uh, if it, this was a five-year appointment, that uh, a couple of years uh, uh, after three years down the road, so to speak, um, that we would have somebody with a five-year appointment in the director of operations position. And that at that point, we may have a city administrator in this city. Um, by reducing this to three years, my term has a little bit over three years left. This current term is myself as mayor. If uh, the council so decides to go with the city administrator at that point, whoever is the director of operations, um, that position does not have to be renewed. Uh, in other words, that, that person does not have to be dismissed. However, they do not uh, have to have their, their uh, um, appointment renewed. In other words, that position could go away after three years. In my opinion, these three years gives me the opportunity um, to improve the city in the way that I see fit at, the, at, the, at this time, and I hope the council does too, um, working within the, the framework of the position of mayor and the and the, the TO as uh, as as it is uh, it is as, as it is proposed um, regarding table of organization changes. We need to just point out we need to look at the amendment first before we go to the full document. Okay. Is that right? Very good. Uh, on the amendment, we have a motion and a second uh, under discussion on the amendment only. Okay. On the amendment, under discussion? 
Alderman Rinfleisch. Um, just clarification here. We're looking at uh, just the director of operations position being for three-year term. Where do the other two positions currently stand with their uh, The uh, other terms? two positions will not, uh, um, presently we have those employees in the city. Right. Uh, they are both under five-year terms at the moment, and uh, neither, neither of those positions at the moment have more than, ha they, they both have less than three years under their present appointment remaining. Thank you. Any further discussion under the amendment? If there is none, roll call please. And I vote would be to amend the appointment to three years. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? And Hannah, all right. 15 eyes. Motion carries. Um, do we need a motion now on putting the- A motion the to- um, President the Gisha, a motion on the amended document. Uh, thank substitute you, Your Honor. Resolution. I move that the amended substitute resolution be ordinance. put upon it. Ordinance. Darn, that was so close. <laughs> be put upon its passage. <laughs> do we have a second? We have a motion and a second on the amended substitute ordinance. Your Honor, if I may, uh, I, just to address some, uh, some very well thought out and I think pertinent questions that were put before the council that we've all maybe heard about over the last couple of weeks and from um, a lot of people I greatly respect who spoke here this evening. Um, if I could just note just a couple of them. Uh, an unproven plan, yes, if I was, if I was a, uh, a bureaucrat, and I don't mean that as a pejorative, I don't mean that as a negative, if that was where my life, uh, my life's very hard work was, I would say I would not understand this. This is a, government, a structure that is market-driven structure. It's a private sector structure. And uh, if I've heard it once, I've heard it a gazillion times uh, in running for this office and at very events, why can't the city run more like a business? This runs the city as a business. So is it an unproven plan as compared to Manitowoc or municipalities? You could say that, but, I'll, but from what I've seen in budgets across the state of Wisconsin and municipalities across the state of Wisconsin, perhaps an unproven plan was needed some time ago to break what is the norm that the taxpayers are feeling these days. Um, one of the questions that was raised uh, that the talk was in the future. If, the, if, it's, if it's for the future, why not now? And that's, that answer to me is fairly simple. In less than, in about three years, we're gonna have a new census in this town. It's gonna to cause redistricting of our whole room here where we all are. There will be less aldermen when that happens. District lines will change. We may have at-large uh, uh, aldermen. We, some of this will be dictated to us. From that's the way it's set up in the state of Wisconsin. With less aldermen, there'll, there'll be less committees. With less committees, hence the resolution I put before you or that you'll see later in the discussion about the, uh, this making committees smaller. That's all in anticipation. It's all in planning. Uh, and the idea is that, that there'll be less of us. And at that time, a city administrator, I believe, will be necessary. And frankly, I believe that will change the role of the mayor potentially, probably very seriously, to part time. Um, Three managers. Why are we doing three? Well, they're not three managers. Two of those are already there. It's, we're not suddenly hiring three managers. It's not the case at all. And it will allow us to take director positions in the future not, and make them manager positions and not give these, these five-year appointments. So there is a future plan to moving towards city administrator, I believe, contained in this. It's not budgeted. Terry Hansen was here at our last council meeting, or our community the whole meeting that uh, explained to you, and I believe you had a sheet put on your desk this evening, that explains the, um, the budget. This budget for 2011, I believe, and talking with Terry after that meeting, was done with this in mind. So again, it's forethought and planning uh, that went into this. Government Structure Committee, I am so glad we have that, and I'm so glad Eldon is chairman of it, because that is our future to get to that point three years from now, when this whole room will change and the management of this city will change. That role, as the Committee of the Whole set it out to be our long-term vision and future, and the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee was gonna be our short-term solution, which came up with this. 
is going to play an extremely important role for us, a vital, vital role. But we still have to make changes and plan for that, and some of these plans are contained in this. The push or rush, that one's always my favorite in Sheboygan. Uh, anytime you talk about something for under 20 years, it's pushed and rushed in the city of Sheboygan, and I understand that. Um, but this has been in place and discussions have been happening on this, public discussions, for about six or eight months. Uh, we need change in this structure of city government. We need bottom-up and top-down ideas and this is running the city like a business. There is a time for city administrator. I support a city administrator. And as I said at the committee, I didn't vote for that guy. And I didn't support him. I did just the opposite. But we, the voters went to the polls with an expectation of what they were voting on. And I don't take that lightly. And I feel it would be the height of arrogance to take that lightly. They knew what they were voting on. They knew what duties they were going to give him. We have three years to put together a plan to, to handle this this reorganization that's going to be thrust upon us via the census and redistricting. Now is the time for that committee to do its work. I support their work and I believe it will lead to a city administrator, but I hope that answers some of the question, at least the thought process in why not now and that it being an unproven plan. Thank you. Uh, thank you, President Gisha. Um, I promised myself I would uh, not respond to the public forum this evening, but I, I did just want to cover one issue. Um, and that was the inference of, uh, of, of uh, Dave Lutsky and this being nepotism. Um, number one, uh, uh, nepotism, um, by definition, and this is out of Encarta, is favorit favoritism shown to relatives, favoritism shown by somebody in power, to relatives and friends, especially in appointing them to good positions. Nepotism. Um, the reason I said that Dave Lutsky would be my choice for this position is because I was being open and honest. It has nothing to do with nepotism. Dave Lutsky is our city, is our city assessor um, that was hired by the former administration to do that job. Uh, Dave Lutsky is an employee of the city, um, is not a longtime friend of mine. That would be nepotism if I gave somebody a job in the city. Uh, this is called recognizing the talent that you have and giving that talent the opportunity to make changes. However, I've said it, the reason I said that my choice would be Dave Lutsky is because I'm being honest. That would be my choice. This is going to the Civil Service Commission. Civil Service Commission is comprised of three individuals. Two of the three were appointed by my predecessor to the Civil Service Commission. One of them happens to be the father of Alderman Rindfleisch, who is on the Government Structure Committee. Now, if people are talking about nepotism and a, uh, something being underhanded in this whole process, I don't believe that Alderman Rindfleisch's, Rindfleisch's father, Ron, uh, would allow me to influence him on his choice coming out of the, out of the uh, Civil Service Commission. So I just wanted to make that clear. If, if David Lutsky comes out of the Civil Service Commission as one of the three to five uh, appointees that come out of the Civil Service Commission to my hiring team, uh, will, I, will I hire him for this job if my hiring team agrees with me? Yes, I would love to. Is he going to be one of those people? I do not know. This will be a nationwide search. I've said that from the start. I am not going to appoint anybody as an interim because I think that would again cloud the process. I'm not going to appoint anybody as an interim operations director. So I just wanted to make that clear. Uh, there is no nepotism involved here, and that is the only thing I, I, I took offense to in, in, our, in our fine uh, citizens that spoke this evening. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I've got a question for Attorney McLean. Uh, after the process is through, the interview process, the Civil Service Commission sends four or five people for the mayor to interview. And then I want to follow up with a question for the mayor. But the ultimate appointment or the ultimate decision that uh, Mayor Ryan makes and his director of operations, is that subject to council approval? Yes, these positions would be appointed by the mayor, subject to council approval. Okay, so uh, 
I know, I know my constituent, Mr. Hutz, has some problems with this possibility of Mr. Lutsky getting the job. Uh, I feel in my conversations with the mayor, the best person is going to get the job. And, uh, what, uh, and so it's going to be subject to council approval. So I think if there's any semblance of any hanky-panky, which I, I don't think there's going to be, the council is going to have final approval on this, on this position. And then my question for you, Mayor Ryan, is um, you might want to tell the council and the public who's on your interview team besides you. I have not established the interview team as of yet, but it will be the, the, the uh, interview team will be com uh, comprised of uh, department heads in the city. Thank you. And, and not department heads that are involved in this, obviously. <laughs> Any other discussion? We have Alderman Sirk. Thank you, Mayor. Um, first of all, I would not be voting for this reorganization. I got a couple of reasons. Number one, are my constituents. I received a number of calls and emails from people saying that I voted for Bob Ryan as mayor. <clears throat> Excuse me, and I, but I disagree with what he's trying to do. And uh, based on that, I, I've got to follow what, what my district is, is talking about. Secondly, I do agree wholeheartedly with what Mike Hutz and Ellen Berg said and mentioned earlier today. They did a very good job of it. One of the issues that seems to come up is this, is this proposal, is it budget neutral or is it not budget neutral? Um, I guess when we voted, and I voted against the budget for 2004, I think if most of the council members here knew that within that budget itself was money to be spent on this reorganization, I think it should be brought forward at the time we were talking about the budget and not after the budget's been passed. Um, we received, for the viewing audience here, we just received 15 minutes before the, the council a document that, that shows how we're going to finance this. And it says, I'm quoting, uh, for the director of operations out of the general fund, it's going to be 20% from the police, 20% from fire, 20% from DPW, 20% from building inspection, and 20% from engineering. Aren't these departments we just laid off people? And we lost basically city services through layoff, and now we're going to take that money that could have perhaps saved us laying off and, and lessening uh, reduction in services. If I, if I can answer your question on that, Alderman Surik, um, yes, those figures are what is in the budget. Those are the figures that are in the budget. Those are not figures that we were presented to this, you know. They, they were requested for this evening. However, they are in the budget document for 2010. Um, regarding just bringing this up, this, I, I, this proposal was made to the Committee of the Whole back in October. Okay, this proposal, through finance was discussed. The budget was discussed. I, 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 from several aldermen, several aldermen said they thought it was the best budget process they had ever gone through. Um, the budget was, was discussed openly. It was not just slammed on everybody's desk at the last second. Um, so these are, not, this, these are not proposed ways to pay for that position. Those numbers are in the budget and we're passed, that we're passed by, well, 15 of these 16 council members. Anything else, Alderman, sir? I guess I'd beg the question to the Please. other council members, did they know at the time they voted for the budget that these figures were in there and that it may result in, in loss of some of our employees? Thank you. I'd beg the question. Thank you, Alderman, sir. Um, Oops, I'm sorry. We have Alderman Hanna in order. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, thanks for the explanation on the back of this page about where it's coming. So these are monies that were already in the budget by these departments. Correct. More people are not going to be laid off. Correct. Okay. Because the, the front page is a little bit confusing with positions that were eliminated before this budget year. Right. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Next we have Alderman Wangaman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm a little bit disturbed that when someone comes to our public forum that they be taken to task for expressing their opinions. I thought the public forum was an open, free discussion. It's my opinion that this discourages people from coming in here in an open, free discussion. I also am a little bit confused. If you read Robert's Rules of Order, it says that the chief administrating officer of a committee or of a meeting remain totally neutral and that should he enter into the discussion that then he must step away from the podium and the next ranking officer take over the meeting. Now tonight I've heard many uh, 
comments come from the podium or from, the, from your chair uh, that could hardly be considered neutral. Now, I may be wrong on this, and maybe I should ask Attorney McLean for a uh, ruling, because I was under the understanding that at all times we followed Robert's rules of order. And if that is, in fact, the case, then you have made comments that are out of order. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Wagaman. I would like uh, Attorney McLean to uh, comment on that, because I know this uh, subject has been brought up uh, over the several years that I have been on the council myself. Attorney McLean. Uh, for one thing, as far as Robert's Rules of Order, uh, if, if there's an issue, the time to bring it up is when the issue arises uh, and bring up a point of order at that time. Uh, uh, Robert's Rules is just procedural. Uh, if you've got an issue, raise it at the time. Otherwise, basically, it's a waived, uh, waived argument. Uh, as far as the chair speaking or the or the the mayor speaking, uh, you know, he, I don't know that he's spoken in support of it. I think he's he's uh, done some explanation as to what's in there. Uh, I don't think he's been really pitching it. Obviously, uh, this is the mayor's plan. Everybody knows that. It's not really a secret. Uh, this is what the mayor is requesting. Uh, so I don't know if. Uh, I guess I would suggest if all individual aldermen have issues with anything the mayor or any other alderman is saying, uh, they should raise it as a point of order at the time. Thank you, Attorney McLean. So we have uh, President Kisha. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify the uh, information that uh, Finance Director Hansen gave. The back part with all the individual lines that show past organization, proposed organization, that's just to kind of give you a year over year look at what it would look like before and after. The real changes or the real funding sources, as, as has been pointing out, is in the back. And that 20%, uh, basically all the departments that, that this director of operations has authority over pays a portion of their salary. That's the way you do it in the real world. And, uh, and each department, it's roughly $20,000. And if um, my other good friend from the first district can find me a person we laid off who made $20,000 in the Department of Public Works, uh, uh, then he would have a point. However, that didn't exist and doesn't exist. And, uh, and therefore, it would not have an effect on any layoffs whatsoever. Thank you, President Kishin. Alder Person Clayness. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I have a question. Um, if someone could answer, maybe Alderman uh, Rindfleisch. Is there a reason why the city administrator position has to wait for three years? Is there, are we, is there some kind of um, state law or something that says we have to, it can't happen sooner than that? Alderman Rindfleisch, please. Oh, thank you, if I may. Um, uh, no, there's no state law in terms of creating the city administrator position. The procedure is exactly what we're doing right now. Uh, we are changing within the table of organization. Um, looking at uh, making some changes. Uh, the only difference would be a recommendation for city administrator would be one position versus you know, a new one unequal with two others. Uh, but the process is the same, procedure would be the same. There's no, there's no reason we couldn't do a city administrator right now. The only reason that we talked about uh, after the term, actually wasn't three years, is came from before this, this election. And the reason why the, the recommendation for the committee uh, was to slow it down was because um, we can't make any changes to the position of the mayor uh, in terms of salary or anything else for the sitting administrator. So we felt it was appropriate to go through the, the, the election cycle. Uh, the mayor's been elected. Um, you know, the duties of the mayor that he's running for the position that he ran for were laid out. Um, and um, you know, we, and we, can't, we could not adjust his salary in any way or shape or form until prior to the election so that anybody running for that office knew what that salary was going into it. I have a follow up then, because um, I uh, kept thinking, why why is a city administrator sitting in the background, in the back room somewhere, waiting three years? Um, uh, because I see the city administrator is enabling the mayor to do what he wants to do, which is to get out and develop the city, without the um, encumbrances of daily meetings and uh, nitty gritty operations in the city, uh, which an administrator would be overseeing. Um, I have looked at this plan. I've seen it since October. I've really looked at it hard. 
And in my gut, I think it's lopsided, and I have a hard time approving it. The lopsidedness comes from so much management on operations. You've got capable, well-paid people as chief of police, chief of fire department, um, public works, and then you're going to put someone on top of that. Then you have the director of finance taking on positions that the director of finance has never taken on, and I feel as if the director of finance is overworked right now. And I just, I, um, I just think, you know, it's just like there's so much management on this side, and then there's not enough management on this side, and um, we're working with a, a lopsided structure. So I really have a trouble with it. Sorry, Mayor, but I really, um, I've been waiting to watch every development on it, and I, I don't know. Thank you, Alderperson Clayness. Um, if I may uh, uh, comment without being mistook here for trying to influence one way or the other. Um, the, the, the reason for the Director of Operations being over the departments he is is because those are the operational uh, departments of the city. Those are the, that's the, that is the day-to-day -day operations of the city. These are the departments that deal with the general public. And they, they, are, they are like in that way. Um, with finance and administration, those are all of the support departments in the city and do like functions of supporting the other departments. And that's why it is, that's why it is arranged that way. Mm -hmm. um, regarding the city administrator, um, people can't answer to two masters, so to speak. If you have a city administrator and a full-time mayor at the same time, who's in charge? Is it a city administrator or is it a mayor? Um, if you take a, the statutory power away from the mayor and give it to the city administrator, that's not what I was elected for. Um, in the future, can we have a city administrator reduce the statutory power of the mayor? If that's what the public decides, that's what the public decides. Um, but right now, to bring in a city administrator and reduce the statutory powers of the office that I ran for, um, I don't think that is what the public elected me for. So, thank you. Thank you, Alder Person Clayonis. Alder Member Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a clarification in the sense of statutorial powers, what's in the um, the policy creation, the elected office itself, city administrator does not take away from that. Um, one comment I always hear is that city administrators raise taxes or lower taxes. No, they don't. They have absolutely no control raising lower or lower taxes. Uh, the recommended budget, just like the budget process goes through here, uh, but the, um, uh, the will of the people through the elected off office, part-time mayor, full-time mayor, still maintains itself. The will of elected people through the offices that we hold in these desks here <laughs> as uh, council members, that hasn't changed. We're responsible for, for policy. All the administrator does is administrate um, the duties. Reality is, is the plan in front of us has three administrators entitled things that aren't administrators, or should call something else. Um, my, my preference would be for one administrator. Um, call it's the same policy, same procedure, does not change the role of the mayor or the council at all. The only thing we could do in three years would be to lower the salary of the mayor. Uh, but there are city codes that, um, statutorily, um, of what the mayor is responsible for, including the budget. Uh, including chairing this meeting, including uh, casting a vote, which is a political position. A uh, city minister cannot cast a vote because it's not elected office. Um, so I just want to clarify that a little bit in terms of statutory right. If they go to a city manager form of government, there there would be that that would be something that I think you're referring to, in the sense that um, statutorily they have control that's and they're not elected, and that's something that the committee was strongly opposed to, was taking away power of the mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ray Flesh. Alderman Bourne. He answered my question. Thank you. Alderman Bowers. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Reinfleisch, uh, is there any uh, time schedule that uh, you've set for this committee to come up with recommendations one way or the other? Or, uh, if, if there is a time schedule, when do you think that we could implement this? Would it be through a referendum to the council? Uh, of course, perhaps that's one of the questions you're going to be uh, asking. And how many members are on this committee? As I recall, there were maybe, you want, 10? Alderman Rinfleisch. Um, 
Actually, I am vice chair this moment in time uh, of the committee, not chair of the committee. That is Alderman, Bo oh, excuse me, mm -hmm. Alderman Bourne, um, uh, former alderman, <laughs> uh, is here. Alderman Bourne uh, is, uh, Berg is here. Uh, he may be able to answer some of my question in terms of schedule. The uh, reality is that we have a meeting set this Thursday, uh, but the council will dictate uh, out of the committee. Uh, we'll make recommendations, obviously, coming out of that council of when things can be done. Uh, but uh, that's in terms of referendum. Um, I'm sure the committee will make a recommendation, uh, but ultimately it's going to be the council to make that decision of which direction they want to go, if they want to do a referendum or not. Whatever report comes back, this, this council has the f final say. Um, I can't really open up the floor, so I guess I'll just leave it at that. Thank, Thank you, Alderman Um You know, this is, this is not a, a change in the structure of city government. This is a change in the table of organization. Since in the last six years, actually since April 2004 until now, there's been 56 TO changes that have happened in the city. You know, 56, this is, this is a change in the table of organization. This is not a change in the <laughs> structure of our government. Yeah, just so we understand that. Alderman Bourne, or no, I take that back. Alderperson Montemayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to call the question. We have a motion to call the question. Do we have a second? Aye. We have a second. I'm calling the question. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Question is called. Roll call, please. Hold on. <laughs> oh, okay. And thank you, Alderperson Montemayor. Yeah. The motion was to um, pass the substitute ordinance as amended. Okay. Koth? No. Kittleson? Aye. Quayunas? No. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? No. Surik? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? No. Wangaman? No. Boren? Aye. Bowers? No. Excuse me? No. Thank you. Someone was coughing while you were saying. <laughs> Decker? Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. and Heidemann. Aye. Seven eyes, eight noes. Motion fails. We Other need, matters? We need to also file the companion copy document, 2338, that came out of salary and grievance. We just need to file those documents. Move the file. Thank you. Motion is second to file companion documents. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? I don't understand the vote on, on uh, 2338. Uh, eight eyes. Eyes to pass the stuff you said? No, seven eyes, eight no's. Oh, I no, that, I'm sorry. No, that's what you said. That's what I said? Yes. Okay, uh, on uh, substituting the duplicate, or on filing the duplicate documents, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Documents are filed. Other matters authorized by law. Attorney McLean. 23 an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2010 and June 30, 2011. That goes to law and licensing. 2342 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Elmer Schneider requesting a waiver of the sex offender residency restrictions. That goes to PP&S. 2343 is an RO by the purchasing agent submitting an evaluation of request for proposal 1319-10 received on February 25 for the purchase of two asphalt patching trailers for the motor vehicle division. That goes to public works. 2344 is a resolution authorizing the purchasing agent to enter into contract for the purchase of two asphalt patching trailers for the motor vehicle division. That goes to Public Works. 2345 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from the Department of Natural Resources stating that they believe the city was in violation of its municipal stormwater permit when it failed to immediately investigate potential illicit discharges at a facility in the city between December 2008 and December 2009. And that goes to Public Works. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned.